So chips may have a problem, or do they, right? So SOXX, SMCI, AMD, and NVIDIA all were selling off today. And we did have bullish news coming out in the markets, but it really wasn't able to foster any momentum in the chip sector. SMCI down nearly 9.48% after being massively up, kind of filling that gap, hitting its head on the moving average. And we can also see that in SOXX, um, especially with AMD and NVIDIA not doing too hot, SMCI not helping the markets either. Again, AMD and NVIDIA, the largest winning SOXX. And it's just a ugh, kind of day for those stocks. Uh, breaking below the nine day moving average, it naturally puts the question in, are we gonna have continual downside in chips? Or is this a buying opportunity that is undervalued, especially with some bullish news hitting the news waves on the market? We also could be correlating this with tariff expectations that these companies are gonna be negatively affected by tariffs, but really tariffs aren't necessarily gonna be implemented. They are a threat. They are a threat to basically use the negotiation tactic of bringing your opponent to the table and then hashing out a negotiation. So today we're gonna to dive in exactly what is going on with NVIDIA, what's going on with AMD. We're not really gonna cover SMCI because I think it's just a penny stock in the easiest way I can describe it. I personally don't like it. We'll cover SOXX, but really the main focus is going to be the big two kahunas, NVIDIA and AMD. We even discuss Intel, and then we'll talk about some of the Fed minutes meetings and the good news that's going on in the market. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive in. So we're going to start off with AMD, considering it had the largest percentage loss, 2.82% at the time of recording this. Uh, market's going to close in about 40 minutes when I'm recording this. So overall, AMD paired a lot of the gains it had the last two days and basically just gave it all back to the market. It hasn't made a lower low, but what the nice thing is, it's forming a consolidatory phase, but we really need to see that bullishness, bearishness kind of play out where it's just gonna be staying in this range. If it doesn't stay in this range, then subsequently we're looking at more downside potential. And how low can you go? Well, AMD below the 50, below 200, that's traditionally bearish. So you mostly short most of these rips. However, you've had a lot of opportunities to short this. So naturally puts into question, isn't it in a place that is a buying opportunity? Volume has petered down, right? Volume isn't really spiking. We're not really getting these larger dips in volume. And we're just kind of leveling out as we saw on the daily chart for AMD, which I can pull up right here. We can see that AMD had a buy signal on the daily chart and was hitting this zone, right? So we can see right here, we're kind of hitting this zone, ending of the bearishness, kind of showing some bullish momentum pulling out there. However, as we spent one day above the nine day, we just got slapped right back down, especially with a lot of these Terra fears hitting a lot of these AI chip companies where people are basically looking at other things to buy. Also with AMD basically coming below the 90 day moving average, Bitcoin is also selling off, right? So it's not bolstering these AI companies to be fervent, right? Bitcoin going up was the fervency, right? The temperature to basically engage in buying these companies. And naturally with that cooling off, it puts into question, okay, closing the low of the day, near the low of the day, NVIDIA actually having a uh, gap up sell off candle. The markets were heading up stronger. However, they got mixed news, especially with some of the news that we're about to cover. And again, this is presenting an interesting buying opportunity, like I said with AMD. It's in this zone. The trend is very, very weak for bearishness. So it's looking like, okay, let's take a look at the weekly to more clarity. Okay, we got some curling on the indicators, right? We're, again, bearish. RSI looks to be curling. Smart money flow looks to be curling. Uh, curling. The indexes are all showing like they still want to go up if you look at the S&P and the NASDAQ. So one bad day like this doesn't necessarily put everything off the table, but it does put into question of, are we gonna get bearish continuation in the markets, especially because the markets really haven't had that 1% pounder day. Now we got also PCE coming out tomorrow. So it's going to be a jam packed day. Personally, I would like to see AMD blow out the low right here before I give it the death sentence of its bearish, right? And we can look at another big cap stock like NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA right now is heading into this area of support. It has a fair value gap above. We basically had an inside candle. We actually broke the low momentarily on the day. However, we actually didn't. So on this candle low of the day, 
well it's 135.82 low of the day here 135.67 so we broke it by 20 cents but we managed to hold it right now it's not really giving a lot of momentum to the upside right nvidia is kind of just showing all this of bad juju where we're breaking trend lines we're very close to this 50-day moving average so could be an interesting buying opportunity or as nvidia has shown has this weird tendency to basically come right to the 50 and then ricochet right back up so again that's going to be a big question for a lot of us are we basically going to see this ricochet go right back up on the markets and subsequently are we going to get that bullish continuation so again throw in the comment section below guys what you think i personally own nvidia shares at 142 dollars a share i'm selling calls against it for this downside potential because i want to generate long-term profitability However, if you're looking to get into NVIDIA, it's excellent time in my opinion, based on this, it has a head and shoulders pattern kind of forming right here. But here's the thing, we still have to form the right shoulder. And that means that once we form that right shoulder, we have the possibility to blow out as we're heading into the December rally uh, part of the stock market, right? That's when everything's on Christmas sale. Everything is basically going hunky dory and Bitcoin selling off was pretty predictable. Again, NVIDIA coming out with a lot of good news, right? Getting into the software, getting into Blackwell, the profitability is extremely large. So do I think this sell-off is warranted maybe for the guidance? But look at it as a buying opportunity more than a selling opportunity, right? This is definitely gonna be one of those stronger stocks in the market as we saw, right? Like Apple, for example. I was saying Apple was looking pretty consolidative down here, and now it's finally exploding. So stocks like Apple, Microsoft, right? Microsoft having 2% day. Definitely liked my Microsoft option that I was basically playing, and I'm gonna be in for the long haul. So Apple, Microsoft, all rallying it can't not sustain bearish nvidia when the rest of the market's running right it can't be a dang boat anchor for the rest of the market so if we look at amazon also massive three percent day we look at goog right goog after being sued by the government is above the 50-day moving average so if lawsuits and bad news couldn't bring these mega caps down why do you think just nvidia and tariffs and a okay earnings is going to magically wipe out all these gains that these companies have had also the fear and greed sitting slightly above where it was yesterday at 64 this in showing that there's continuation in the bullishness in the market as we jump back to the s p right uh, we've sustained weekly higher highs right now closing basis on the s p and it's going to be a closing base on the nasdaq but actually bouncing off of that previous support which is fantastic news if you're a bull out there again are we going to challenge all-time highs i do think that with the pce data that we're about to get we can challenge all-time highs and what is that data looking like right let's go to this week and we can clearly see the pce data that's coming out on wednesday core pc prices are going to be an indication of what the data may come out as and we can clearly see lower prices for the month of Q3, which indicates, okay, well, previously 2.8, now 2.2, that's negative pressure on PCE. GDP expected to come in at 2.8, right where everyone was estimating. This is the preliminary print, but it could bolster more movement to the upside if we get that like bolstering of GDP came in better than we were expecting. Initial jobless claims will be watched closely considering the Fed comments that we'll get into just a second because we just had Fed minutes today get released. However, they still do not have expectations for PCE or core PCE. I expect 2 and 2.6 on my personal basis of what I see PCE price. I expect a slight tick down, not major. And then we also have Chicago PMI. So we got a large amount of news crammed into a low volume day, right? So a lot of the momentum is going to be one directional. We're going to pick a direction and we're going to go, right? That's going to be the case for Wednesday. We will be streaming it live 8 15 8 30 ish going live for the pc day we'll probably stream into market open and then we'll conclude so kind of give you guys that morning stream however with the tariff talks again that's more mainly to bring the opponents to the table why is trump doing it basically he has two months till he gets into the presidency if he can get the talks done beforehand before having institute tariffs then fantastic, right? And everyone's saying all this price inflation. Again, the Fed isn't even saying that, right? The guys that hate this guy's guts are not saying that in their Fed meeting minutes. So number one, we got a ceasefire approved in Lebanon. So that's fantastic news. The markets are gonna, once that's official, are gonna basically start going, yay, no more war, therefore rally, right? They, they look for these things to rally. 
And then, uh, but the bad news is that no ceasefire allows Israel to focus on the Iranian threat. Gotta love it. Netanyahu, warmonger, not skipping a beat, waiting to wage war on somewhere. And then we got Fed minutes. Some participants saw that the pause easing and hold policy rates at a restrictive level if inflation remained elevated. Again, we don't necessarily have necess that data that the Fed's going to say it's elevated or remained elevated. They're just saying, hey, if it's bumpy a little bit, it's okay. They don't want to see a massive spike. We also got some participants said it might be appropriate in the future to consider resetting the over overnight reverse repo rate to the bottom Fed funds rate target. What does this mean? Well, for those that don't know what the reverse repo is, it's basically the Fed's piggy bank. And they pay people to hold money in this piggy bank. What they're saying is, instead of paying you the higher percentage, we're going to pay you the lower percentage on the Fed's, Fed's fund rate because they pay the Fed's fund rate is actually a range. It's not a set number, it's a range. So it's usually about 25 basis points or 0.25% plus or minus. So they're basically now, let's say the Fed funds rate is 4.7, they're paying 4.75 versus 4.25, right? That's going to be a, that's going to be a spread of like 50 basis points. So they're basically instead of paying you this higher percentage, this percentage down here is to push liquidity into the market. That's what they're looking at. And the reverse repo is taking that and basically saying, nope, we're going to go out into the bond market and uninvert the yield curve because I do not want this thing reinverting. Do not want to repeat 2008 where everything inverted like three, four times after being uninverted. And my friend was very wrong. If you guys follow the channel for quite some time, you know what I'm referring to. I will be gloating to him on the live stream tomorrow. But looking as we're heading into the close last 30 minutes, definitely pounder hour markets looking like some of the chips are recovering. At this point, again, I don't see the true catalyst that's going to bring us down. We got ceasefire going on in Israel. Fed minutes are, have been published. We can see that the for calls a strong, solid economy in 2025. I wonder why you're saying that now. And then we have to see if the next meeting minutes are going to show anything for basically, uh, how to put this, um, inflationary tendencies or anything like that. And also we got sirens sounding simultaneously multiple areas of Israel. You know, Hezbollah just got to love. They're like, oh, you're not fighting them. We're going to fight them over here. So got to love that. But short term interest rates uh, par earlier losses after release of Fed FOMC minutes. That's mainly the bond market, right? Well, let's take a quick gander at the bond market. The two year yield heading down lower. 10 year, which is all your mortgages heading higher. Sorry guys, not getting cheaper mortgages right now. 20 and 30 all simultaneously heading higher. So basically the curve is kind of going back to where it was. Uh, the Regional banks did not like the news necessarily, but they did have a massive run. Looking at the major sectors, home builders got hit pretty darn hard today, especially with some of the stocks that were in there, along with XLB, which is material sector. Again, Amgen also probably in this one. If you guys didn't see, Amgen had pretty bad earnings along with Best Buy. But XLK continuing tech stocks pushing higher. That's going to be necessarily bullish for the market. And last but not least, we can wrap up with the Fed expectations right over here we basically got 36 percent versus 63 percent let's refresh the page just to make sure that's up to date for all of you and 63 to yep so basically the fed minutes didn't necessarily change something there's still a higher probability again williams kind of came out a couple days ago and gave us the green light for fed rate cuts in december so make sure you guys stay tuned for the live stream that's going to be tomorrow 8 15 eastern standard time before market opens we're going to be covering peace and all the veracity of this wonderful data that is coming out for the markets. We're also going to get some mortgage data and also some news from our friends in the EU and the central bank. So it's going to be a fun one, but the main bulk of it is going to be that 8.30 data drop that's just going to send markets in volatile craziness. Watch me come trade futures along with setting up for your morning stream as we go into the final day of high volume trading in the markets. We also have the weekend deep dive linked over here. If you guys want to check that out where you would have known exactly how to play this week, the levels and crucial for the market. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you in the live stream.